here with Hit and Run Candlesticks. Rick has been trading for 30 years. He's a true teacher. He's coached thousands of traders to learn how to be successful and to take over their financial future. He's a gem of a person and he cares very deeply about the success of his students. His students absolutely love him, as do we. And we're so happy that he's here to present today. Welcome, Rick. He's gonna be talking about, oh, we lost my screen. Well, he's gonna tell you what he's gonna talk about. <laughs> uh, conquering uncertainty in volatile markets, what we're here for. Uh, the most important thing to remember in volatile markets and the seven simple questions. Uh, these seven simple questions will eliminate uncertainty and his favorite strategy for spotting high probability entry points. So welcome, Rick. Get you that unmute there. Here here. Hey there, you 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 are way too kind there, Nikki. Way way too kind. <laughs> Hello, Pat. How are you? Um, let's see. I'm not sure which mic I'm on. Uh, okay. All right then. Let's. Uh, Turn it over to you. Now, do you see a PowerPoint looking thing? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Hey, again, uh, thank you very much for that introduction, Nikki. I sh I really do appreciate it. I truly do. That was very kind of you. Thank you both for inviting me, all three of you, Raleigh, Pat, and Nikki. Uh, thanks for inviting me here. I truly appreciate that. So um, you, you can see by my PowerPoint, I am not a uh, PowerPoint fancy doer kind of guy. Uh, we're going to look at uh, three, four, four little slides, and then we're going to look at charts. And these will be live charts today. I will be looking at... Uh, uh, well, well, I'll be talking about, uh, I think Nikki said there was seven. I've actually added a couple little more, uh, seven things to questions that I'll ask you and, you know, for you to consider as trading. Um, what else? What else? Let's just go with that. And, oh, one more thing. I encourage questions during the webinar. As you look at charts, somebody might have a question about a chart. Uh, and, and maybe the question, well, and we have to go to that chart to answer the question. So please, I truly, truly, truly urge questions during the webinar. Also, if you ask a question, make sure you put the stock symbol in there in case we need to go backwards so I know which one it is. Otherwise, I, my memory is not that good anymore. So uh, just please do that. All righty. So. Uh, let's see, Conquering Uncertainty, Trading in Volatile Markets. My name is Rick Sadler. Hello. I'm the founder of Hit and Run Candlesticks, and I have an account called The Road to Wealth, and we'll touch on that in just a bit. Um, and let's get through this, I guess, this slide we have to do. If I can figure out how to get it up there. Bear with me for a minute, folks. See? No, I don't. Well, doggone it. I'm not learning, how, or I'm not knowing how to change my slide here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, legally, I guess I have to do this quick little disclaimer. Um, everything you learn here uh, from me today is for educational purposes only. Nothing that we talk about will be should be considered as trading advice or trades for today, although we will be looking at live charts today. Uh, trading, trading can be very dangerous, and I wanna share that with folks. Um, I, I get asked by people in the room all the time, you know, they, they, they start trading and then they, they, um, they open up account, they start trading, and they lose a little bit of money because they start, and the reason is they start trading right away. If, in, in fact, in the trading room this morning, I think I told somebody this, if you want to get ahead in trading, if you find yourself just starting or you're struggling, the secret is to stop trading. Now, that may sound crazy. I don't mean forever. What I mean is stop trying to trade and make money today. Sit back, learn first. Um, I know when I first started trading, I remember, man, I had these great ideas of, man, I was going to be wealthy, 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 big house, couple of boats, maybe an airplane, you know, all this stuff. Um, rude awakening. 
a very rude awakening. Uh, I have a few things, but I certainly don't have an airplane. I certainly don't have a big house. Uh, but I have wealth, I feel, uh, personal wealth, um, wealth that I'm able to work uh, from my home, able to take off when I want to take off. Um, and having, you know, have, have, I was able to create um, the income so I could quit my job and have that wealth. So uh, the trick though, I, I learned, it took me a couple of years to learn this, is I had to quit trading before I could learn how to trade. And uh, uh, mainly it was just focus on uh, the charts and not uh, the trade today. Okay, something about um, consist, uh, consistent trading or conquering an uncertainty and being consistent with your trading, we have to think about our trading rules. And I'm not gonna talk uh, a lot about trading rules. Anytime I, I start talking about trading rules, I find most people turn you off. They just don't want to hear you. Uh, everybody's tired of the trading rules. Just show me a tart, teach me how to trade, and let's trade. Unfortunately, there are a few things we need to do um, as far as rules go. And you'll find that my trading rules are pretty darn simple. Now, we all break our rules. That correct? And now let's all be honest, all right? Please be honest. We all break our rules. Of course we do. We're human beings. And uh, it, it's just the way it is. Uh, we do. Now, what we have done um, is we've committed this recently here because the market, although it's been extremely bullish, it's also been, it, it wears on you because there's a lot of things out there right now that might suggest to you that the market shouldn't be bullish, but yet it is. So you have these, this, this tug of war between, I wanna be a trader, but my heart says, man, the market shouldn't be going up. So one thing we did is we committed to be a little truer with our rules. We also tightened up our stops tighten up our stops a bit. If we were wrong about a trade, we were quick to get out of it. And this is to me probably the most important thing is um, we, re we had to revisit our profit goals uh, and base hit pages. Now, what I'm talking about is the profit goals and base hit pages here. Let me, let me put this up there, see if this works right here. That's important right there. Uh, these four words, profit goals and base hits. Uh, that's something that uh, here at Hit and Run Candlesticks we focus on is what we call base hits. Uh, it's not about picking a bottom and picking a top. It's about taking those base hits. So um, I, have a, I have a goal um, last year when I finished trading, uh, my numbers ended up at a certain number. My goal was this year to double it. My goal next year will be to double what I finished this year. That's my personal goal. Um, uh, double the account size, what it is. So I just take my, uh, my profit goal and then I back it down through 12 months, through some math and I find out what I've got to do a day, a week, a month. And I certainly don't make money every single day. Uh, I work very hard to make it by the end of the week and I darn sure better make it by the end of the month because uh, I post my uh, trading account online uh, at Hit and Run Candlesticks for the world to see. So uh, anyone can go in there and see what it is. Uh, my, I don't post day to day, it's, it's posted on a monthly pace, basis and uh, I post the, uh, there's a graph there and, there's, and then there's the first page of my brokerage account showing what we started with and what we ended up with. Um, so you can see whether the account is growing or not. And that's the road to wealth account. And the last slide we wanna look at here, and then we're gonna look at some charts, if I can get it up. There we go. This is um, eight rules. I think I counted eight. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I added some more. Um, so I always wanna ask myself, what is, price doing? And this is what you should ask yourself. These are questions I want to ask you. 
Um, you can certainly answer if you want. You can write this down. Um, you can just think about it to yourself. But ask yourself, what is price doing? Is price in a trend? Is price in a trend right here? Is price consolidating? And this is important for the chart pattern we're going to be looking at today. Is price consolidating? And these are things that have really helped during this. And I, I, I know this has been really a good bullish time, but myself and tons and tons of people I've talked to, they all have this, well, the market looks bullish, it's trending up, but there's always that but. There's, you know, we're, we're, we've got a lot of things hanging out there in the world right now that really question um, how we should be trading. Where is support and resistance? What can the trade do for me? This is one of my favorite right here. What can the trade do for me? Right there. That is one of my absolute favorite uh, questions to ask myself before I enter a trade. Because if a trade, it, th th there are trade setups that look absolutely fantastic. Absolutely, God, that looks great. But when you back up a little bit and you look at it, can it really do anything for you? Um, has price broken out? Or, or is it at that area where it could just potentially explode out the top? So it's so close to a breakout. Has price broken out and pulled back to or near support? Are buyers stepping in? That's important. Candlesticks. Hey, candlesticks are the best way. Price action. Uh, are buyers stepping in? Is risk and reward worth the trade? This one, this one kind of goes with that one a lot. Where would I not like the trade? Where would I not like the trade? Whenever I say this, um, when we have new people in the trading room, you can almost feel the pause, the question, what do you, mind, what do you mean? Where would I not like the trade? Well, when you're looking at a trade, let's see if I can do this now. I'm gonna, uh oh, how do I get this off? There we go. I assume everybody can see um, my chart right now. We'll bring up the spy here. Okay, so um, I guess, are we still on? Oh yeah, I think we are, okay. Um, so if, if you were looking for a trade, uh, let's take uh, like CRM for instance. You look at CRM, and you like this trade, why? Ask yourself why you like the trade. Well, do the math on it. Come over here, and the first thing I look at is I like the fact that it rallied up and it's pulled back. I come over here, I put that line in there. That's pretty close to some support. I like that. Well, I'm pretty close to that, that candle there on the, oh, the 28th. So I want to buy close to support or near support. I want to buy where... Uh, charts are uh, are in a trend, and as far as the trend goes, uh, really on this particular chart, what I would do is something about like that right there. And now I will start looking for that buy signal that might get me in the chart. Now I want to see. I also want to know what can the chart do for me. So for something like that, I might go to a weekly chart just so I can see a bigger picture. I don't use the weekly chart to trade. I don't enter on a weekly chart. I don't exit on a weekly chart. However, I do look at a weekly chart to, um, to uh, help with, the, with uh, what can it do for me. So as I look at this, I, have, I can't help not noticing that there's a little bit of resistance right in there. So 185.35 up there to uh, 194.80, right? Let's go back to that daily chart. Is that chart worth it right here on this trade? And see, for me, this might not be worth it. Might not be worth it. Now, on the other hand, 
if this chart was to break out, I'm gonna go actually to a monthly chart just so I can take a look at it, yeah. So on the other hand, if this chart was to break out, that would be a different story. We would have blue sky up there. So for a personal trade of mine, my trade right now, if I was to buy this now, it would be up into this area. This would be my trade, that's it. My trade would simply be this area, that's it. Once it broke out, that would become a very different trade. I'd wait, watch for that breakout. I want to set it up for that rally, and then we'll look for it to go up. And we're in blue sky up here. So now it has plenty room to go up, and I don't have to worry about that resistance. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy for what this chart is doing. Let's look at W. Let's look at W. And if, if, if we take a look at charts, and this probably goes to the folks that are struggling or maybe they're new to trading or they're thinking about trading. Um, seasoned traders, traders, traders that are actually out there making, making the money, maybe, maybe you made enough money, maybe you make enough money to make a living on it. Maybe you bought a you know, $50,000 boat because of your trading. You know, I say, hey, thumbs up, you're a successful trader. But for those that are struggling, just to show you how you might look for these charts. And remember, if you want to be a better trader, stop trading for a while. Don't try to make money right now. Go back and study charts. So what I'm going to look at is see how this gapped up right here and see how we just consolidated. That's what we're looking for. We can buy in that consolidation or we can buy on the breakout. Now, this black line, by the way, that black line, um, that, that line is near and dear to my heart. Um, if it wasn't for that particular line, I would not be sitting here today. Uh, it's because of this, uh, line right here, this moving average that, uh, took me from total trading to disaster to trading for a living. Uh, and it was this right in here and we call it the T line. Uh, it's nothing more than the eight exponential moving average. That's all it is. There's no whistles and bells, no tricks. It's just simply the eight exponential moving average. But I have found that when charts, when charts pop up, in just a second, and I'll explain the red and green dots there. When charts pop up and we have these consolidation areas that uh, is above the T line, that's what we want to look at. And we want to buy close to that area. I have found that the T line runs very, very close to the trend. Not 100%, but it does run very, very close to the trend. So that would have been a buy, and you could see that little pop right up in this area. And if we look over here, the same thing. So you can see how you could be trading this and making more money than you know what to do with. Now, some people might say, all right, why don't we just get into it somewhere in here? And why don't we just keep it till maybe up here or for that matter, up here? That's fine and dandy if you're a long-term trader. I'm not a long-term trader. Uh, I'm a swing trader. Um, I don't trade for targets. I trade for um, goals. Uh, so remember I, remember I had mentioned that at... Um, the, um, let's see, I, at the end of the year, uh, at the end of the year last year, my goal was to uh, double my account. And then next year it'll be to double my account. And I know this system works. I, I know it works. If it, I, I'm just going to slide this up. Don't, don't do it right now. Please, please don't do it right now. Um, if you, go to hitruncandlesticks.com and you come up here to trading results right there, you click on that, you're going to see something like this right here. Um, and, and I know this system works because it, uh, it started in 2017, but we didn't trade it till actually January of 2018. Uh, opened up a $5,100 account. Today, it's worth $78,000. So not too bad. Not too bad. Um, by making a few changes. Now, 
Uh, this was done by all options, I will say that. I only trade directional calls and puts, that's it. Nothing snazzy, nothing fancy, uh, just directional calls and puts. So I, I know the system works and I know that if one trades with goals in mind rather than targets in mind, I know that works as well. Um, and as we go through here, we'll talk more about that uh, as we go through. Uh, let's look at another chart. Let's look at uh, NIO. Is it NIO? Yeah, we'll look at NIO. NIO, we had an awful lot of members take a look at NIO uh, through this area here, but this is one area in particular that uh, a lot of people made some money on. And what we were looking for was we have a top, a top, a top. We were looking for that breakout and we got the breakout and there's the pullback. And notice it's come back to our trend. Now this is where I wanna talk about the 17 EMA for the first second or the green and red dots. We call that the trendicator. Um, you, I'll also call it the red green line uh, sometimes. And it, it is nothing more than the 17 EMA. That's it. There's no tricks about it. Uh, nothing fancy, just simply the uh, 17 EMA. So that is my, I guess we could call that a moving trend. That's my moving trend. So when I'm looking for charts, I don't, I'm not going to buy a chart that's down here. Uh, let's see here. I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to buy this down here. Uh, I may buy it right here. Uh, I would not buy it here because it's too far, too high. I want it to pull back and put in that little consolidation right in here. And now look how we are, how close we are to the T line right here. We are, we are so, so close to the T line. And that's what I'm looking for. We're in this particular case, we're also fairly close to that 17 EMA. So that is just a definite buy in there. It could be a buy as well on a breakout. Nobody's gonna shoot you if you buy it on a breakout and look at the money that could be or could have been made uh, on this chart on NIO. Um, let's take a look at, uh, what is it, SE? Let's look at SE, there's SE right there. So SE, see how, let, let me talk about this. I, these are two things I think you could take home with you. Um, these two simple things. Uh, one is the T-line, the eight exponential moving average, and the 17 EMA. Now, I use TC2000. Um, we've figured out a way to make the 17 have red dots and green dots. We have, uh, and uh, I say, it, look, everybody's gonna be, uh, at the end of this, you're gonna get a link for a 30 day free trial uh, to both hit, run, candlesticks and right way options. So uh, it, when you get in there in the room, I can show you how to do this. It's real easy, a uh, little complicated maybe for the time we have today, but I'll be glad to glad to share that with you. And I, and I, and I really think that if, if you were to take this home with you, just this scenario right there, that you might be surprised what it can do for you, how it can help you in trading. To start with, I'm never going to go long if I have red dots here. Not ever will I be long if I have red dots. I will only be long if I have green dots. When I have green dots, I want to see the chart rally, uh, like right there was a little rally. This could have been an area to go long. Let's change color. This is a rally. And of course, if you bought it here, you were part of that rally. If you did not buy it here, you're not part of that rally. So this, as, a, as somebody coming into this chart new, you see this rally, there's that pullback. You could be a buyer in here. Now, it took a while. It took a while to really get going, but there it made some money for you. So you can just see what we're looking for here, those pullbacks, that's all we're looking. And we're just looking for those little simple, little simple uh, goals. Uh, I mean, has anyone ever done the math? Let's do this. 
has anyone ever done the math um, what it would take to make $200 a trade or $500 a trade or $2,000 a trade? Have you ever figured out what it would take? And I think you'd be amazed on how little it takes. Um, and, and again, that's something we'll, we can talk about down the road. This really wasn't, didn't come today to talk about this. Sometimes I get sidetracked. Uh, but you, you'd be amazed here how this, can, doing this type of trading can double your account uh, and make it more. Um, I actually, uh, the road to wealth account, um, I actually had to, uh, what was it, March, I had to adjust my goals because um, I actually doubled my account by March. So I had to just adjust the, the, the goals up a little bit for that. Uh, anyway, it, it just works out. Um, so as the chart rallies up, this becomes a buy area in there. The chart, the chart popped and it becomes a buy area in this area, right in this area here. Uh, here's another one right there. So let's take a look at some things here and we'll come back to some more charts, but let's, let's take a look at some live charts. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this over here, uh, and then we're gonna make this stay on top, because one of the things I promised was to, uh, in my, uh, if if you saw my little video uh, for advertising this wonderful program, um, I, I promised on how I'd show you how I find these, and that's what we have here. Um, so we'll take uh, IDXX and. You see how IDXX has rallied up and it's pulled back now. One of our favorite, favorite chart patterns is what we call the 3-8 trap, the 3-8 trap. Now the eight is the T line, that's the eight exponential moving average. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the three EMA up here. I don't put it up there anymore because it, it just, I don't like it on the chart. It, it, I just don't like it. I like a clean chart, so, um, I tend to pull it off. Um, if this says we're in a three tra three H trap, I believe it. Um, so you can see how we've rallied. We pulled back. We're now in that three H trap right in here. What I'm going to do with this is come over here and put a little line at where we are. And I want to make sure that I take a look at this area. See how we broke out and we're pulling back and testing right now. <clears throat> Just a second. Let me drink water. Thank you. <clears throat> See how we, uh, we're supporting right now. This becomes a buying opportunity at this level right here. Um, you can look through this chart. I mean, we can go back from the time our red dots turned green. There are numerous places in here that could have been, uh, could have been bought. Uh, this pullback right in here. And the truth of it is, has it broken our trend? No. So literally, you could have been in this the entire time all the way up here. But if you're a swing trader, you know, if you're a trader that buys and sells, buys and sells, buys and sells, that's okay. That's right. That's the way I am. I'm that kind of a trader. So I'm going to look for these little pullbacks, uh, little pullbacks in like this. Those, any one of those could have gotten you in. This is a nice one right here. I like that one. Here we have a doji bullish engulf. We rallied up, nice little pullback, and then let's get rid of that. Look at that bullish engulf right there. That would have been just nailing, nailing that price right in there. And then up we go. So that would have been a, a little profit area right at the end. Let's take a look at, uh, well, we'll look at pins. We have a red arrow here. Let's take a look at pins. So what this is telling us is that it's pulling back the red arrow. Uh, it met the the qualifications of the uh, um, 3H trap, but it's pulling back. Uh, the only way I would buy it is if it's actually green. That's another little thing that um, I've learned to do. And I, I learned this a long time ago, but it has been one of these things that has really helped in this um, uncertain times that we're having right now. And 
and I'm not, I don't say that lightly. I'm a believer. All right. I'm a, I'm a mask wearer. I don't go out very much. Um, I order my food in things like that. I order groceries in, uh, I am a true believer, uh, to be careful. Um, so one, I would only buy if this is in my case, I use white and black candles. So I would buy on a white candle, uh, green candle for those that use red and green. Uh, I would only look at that uh, on that green candle. Um, uh, let's take let's that, coop. What does coop look like? Coop. coop. There we go. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, I can double click on this and it changes uh, the chart over here on TC2000. Does that on Thinkorswim too. And I think another program, I forget. So here we are with coop. Look how that thing pulled back. How nice was that? Pulled right back and here we opened up inside and the minute we would have been alerted as it started making a new high, that would have been a nice little buy right in there. That's the kind of charts I'm really liking, really, really like. This right here would have been a buy. Um, had a conversation in the trading room today um, and I get asked this an awful lot. Uh, it, this might be a buy uh, earlier in the day uh, coming up or even on this doji right here. Uh, I get asked a lot, aren't you worried about this resistance? Um, no, I'm not. And let me explain that a little bit. Resistance, first of all, if stocks didn't break through resistance, we would have no stock market. I mean, think about it. Stocks move down. If they can't break through the resistance, they're going to move down more. Then if they can't break through resistance, they're going to move down more. Before you know it, they're going to be a JCPenney or a Hertz or something like that. You know, the stock market will be non-existent and we will be out of a job. So no, resistance doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. Follow price action. Candlestick signals is a fantastic uh, uh, vision of price action. So. I'm gonna trade this. Look at that rally right there. So if you would have bought this up into here, maybe you came up here and sold it. Let me move this out of the way just a little bit. Bought it in here. Maybe maybe you sold it on that candle right there and I'm pretty sure I would have sold it. Doggone it, didn't move that enough. Try it now. You know, that's a nice little 14% move. Now, remember I said that, um, I trade options. Do you know that I've never traded an option until January of 2018? Uh, been trading for 33 years actually, and I've never traded an option till 30 till uh, January of 2018. Um, uh, thanks to my good friend Doug Campbell at Rightway Options, uh, he helped me out uh, with options. And uh, again, I only look at the uh, calls and puts. All trades I look at, all trades that we post uh, are good for either options or stock. However, I only trade options. It's a great way to leverage your money. So if I'm buying this chart in this area and it moves up and it's say uh, what 12% or so by the stock, that's going to be maybe a 30% uh, move on the options. And that is how um, the road to wealth account was able to go from $5,100 to uh, what was it, 78,000 or 1,430% in uh, nine months, uh, not nine months, I'm wrong about that, uh, from January 1, 2018 to today. Uh, I did have to take a few months off uh, but uh, uh, from trading and everything, but, uh, but not bad here. So uh, let's look at, uh, Let's find shop. Let's take a look at shop. Look at shop. Look how shop is set up. How nice would it be to, uh, you know, you look at charts, you're finding charts like this, nice and smooth, and they're in that 3 eighths trap. I'm going to put a line right in here because that will act as support area. We're sitting here on the T line. Look how we've rallied and a slight little pullback. Slight little pullback. That would be a buy signal on here. Now, some of the rules I think are very important to keep in mind. When you buy, one, you want to know what the chart can do for you. 
can it do something for you? If the answer is no, move on to the next chart. If the answer is yes, move forward a little bit. So now we want to know what's our risk? Where are we going to put our stop? Well, I'm not going to mess around with putting my stop down here. Honestly, I hear of traders, especially new traders, uh, coming, out, uh, coming out to the market. You know, they see a stock like this, they're going to come down and they're going to put their stop down here. And that just scares the devil clean out of me. Um, that frightens me to no end because all I see is disaster right there. Just total disaster. Can you imagine 11% risk? Holy mackerel. And, and forget about the price for a moment, okay? Forget about the price for a moment. Um, if anybody trades a small account, you're only looking for small charts. Believe me, we do that as well. Uh, it just so happens on this particular alert, uh, some of the bigger, the bigger things are coming up. That, that's what it is. So uh, I'm looking at this live. I can't change it. Um, I just have to go with what's on here. So don't worry about the price so much. Let's, more, let's stay worried more about the chart. Um, but anyway, you don't want to put your stop down here. And this is one of the things that uh, right now we have to be a little more careful, a little more careful, um, and keep that stop just a tad tighter. Um, uh, here's a problem. Say the stock moves down, and if you don't put a hard stop in, you don't, and, and no one likes to get stopped out, okay? I get it. Nobody likes to get stopped out. But stops are there for a reason. And if you don't put a hard stop in, what happens is your stock comes down. You're not too worried about it. Hasn't hit your stop yet. It goes through your stop right here. And now here's what happens. Well, geez, I don't want to lose money. So I think what I'll do is I'll move my stop down to here. Okay. And then what happens is it goes down further. And then what happens is you start making excuses and you, I'll move it down to this next support level down here. Well, before you know it, you're upside down so much money, cripes, you can't sell it now. Holy moly. So it's very important in times like this, if you're wrong about a chart, it's okay. If you're right about a chart, but something stupid happens the night before, then accept it, own it. It's okay. Uh, there is no trading service. There are no traders that make hundreds of trades in a row without being wrong. There's no such thing. It's okay to be wrong. It's all right. So you want to stick to those safety rules a little bit. Another rule you want to stick to, uh, let's just say that you are, your goal and I, th I think this is one area that I may differ from a lot of traders. Um, I don't trade with targets. I, I trade with goals. So if my goal was to make uh, $500 on this trade, right? That's my goal, $500. And let's say I bought however many contracts, okay? And then what happens is, and keep in mind, we're in this this what I think is a beautiful chart pattern. I enter the trade, it moves up. When I reach, say, here's what I like to do. If my goal is 500, I get to $1,000. Then what I do is I cut it in half. I sell half the trade. Now, if my target, or if a target, because I don't mind putting target lines up there. If my target is up in this area, but yet I've met my goal right here, I will take my money. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, I'm not about buying the lows and selling the highs. I'm not about jumping on the top of a mountain and say, hey, this is where it's a buy, and this is where we want to take our profits. Uh, I think each individual trader needs to work with their, their uh, own financial limits, their own financial goals, and everyone is slightly different. So you just need to figure out what your goals are. When I reach those goals, I'll take my money. Now what I will do 
is I will allow the second half to continue to work. Now, I don't usually let it go and go and go and go and go. I'm not that kind of trader. I'm not usually that kind of trader. Uh, I may take it off here. I may take it off right here. But the cool thing about it, it works. I'm, I'm, it works. And like I say, we you know, put the statement to prove it up, up on the website. Um, let's go look at another here. Let's go look at another one. What is, here, here's, here's one I'm kind of liking. Um, oh boy, that really kind of pushed back today. Uh, I was kind of liking Dollar General. And as far as the overall chart goes, okay, all right, I, I could still like this. But I'm going to need to see it open up and get bullish here. And it's still in that, in that possible area. Uh -huh. But we have a nice, nice trend. And I'm just going to draw a trend line up like this right here. Um, right over here. I start to see the buyer step in. I'm likely to be a buyer on, uh, on the Dollar General here. Also, if for some reason I miss a trade here, then I'll look at the breakout area uh, as uh, being a buyer on this. Uh, but the thing, the thing here, look, look how we went from below the green dots to above, and now we've pulled back. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for this, for this uh, uh, chart pattern, just like this. And we want, it to, we, we want it to be lined up in what we call that trap area right in there. We want everything trending to the upside on it. Um, let's look for another one. Let's see what Spot's doing today. Spot, wow, look at Spot. See how Spot pulled, now honestly, on this shooting star, Spot could have pulled back a great deal more uh, a great deal more, but it didn't. Look how that doji was in there. That's pretty far away from away from the T-line there. Truthfully speaking, I never would have bought spot, uh, but it did, uh, it did come up. Uh, it did come up. Here's, here's uh, a breakout scan, and you can see the spot popped up on there. Uh, let me put this, stay on top. Uh, tall. I can look at tall. This is how we find them. Look at that. Nice little pullback right inside that trap area. Uh, because of the market, and let me, let me just talk about this for a second. The market is not bullish to me right now. Um, see how the three is starting to move below uh, the T-line here? See how we've got two red dots? Yeah, I'm not real, real big on a bullish market today. Uh, not, not at all. Uh, I'm going to need that to change. We have a downtrend right here. I need that to change. We have a low, a lower low. I need a low and a higher low to even think about it. Uh, but if it started to change, then a lot of these charts would start lifting up. But right now, I'd be a little careful. Launch. Anyway, I'm digressing off, off of what we're supposed to be doing here. Um, uh, Thomas, T-Mobile. Look at T-Mobile. T-Mobile was a terrific alert right in this area. There were several people in the trading room who took this uh, trade, and they're doing very well today uh, on this trade right here. Um, box, look at box, box. This is a trade I took today uh, because it did just what I wanted it to do. If we go back and look at box, look how we rallied right here. And look how it pulled back. Now, the, the neat thing about this is we can come in here and there's our stop. Now, the stops, by the way, um, there's no, no right or wrong to stops. There really isn't. Uh, everyone has an opinion. Um, there's as many opinions about a stops as there is anything. Uh, some people might use uh, that pivot low area for a stop. But if that doesn't work for you, you don't have to do that. You don't have to use that stop. You could raise your stop up. Who's to say you can't put your stop, say, at the T-line if it closes below the T-line? Who's to say you can't do that? I do that all the time. Who's to say you can't put your stop right here? Nah, that might be a little bit low, high. I, you might be asking to be stopped out. But who's to say you couldn't? So 
when you see a trade that you like, a trade setup that you like, let's do this. So I, I see this top here and this pullback over here. Let's just draw a line across there. See how we broke out and now we've pulled back? That looks like a buy to me. That, that looks like a buy. We're in the trap. We're right there at the trend. You, you can't beat the trend. Um, let's see. Something's beeping at me. I don't know if it means anything. Um, we're, so we're right here at the trend. That looks like a buy. We popped up, but we came back. We're still above the T-line. We're still in that trap area. And then, kaboomy, there we take right off. <clears throat> and so if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you like the price action, if you like what the chart pattern is doing, if it meets your rules, if you've set a stop, if you can see what the chart can do for you, if you can make sense of the trade, then that might be that trade. Uh, this is what Box is looking at to me right now, right in here. Here we have this resistance level. We did break out of it, and now we're looking for a little bit of support right in here. Buyers are in there. Um, I say I did buy a little bit today. Uh, if it starts to break out, I may buy a little bit more because I just bought a little bit, uh, kind of a little sampling uh, type thing there. Uh-oh. Am I running out of time? <laughs> You're not quite getting the hook. We have 10 minutes, Rick. 10 minutes. Okay. Well, I don't have a lot at, at the end for sales pitch, um, but thanks. If you give me just a couple minutes warning, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Maybe three minutes warning. That Appreciate sounds it. great. And we also have several questions oh, that I'd oh, like oh. to read for you as well. Yeah. Let's do some questions. Let's do oh. some questions. All right. So, so here's a question. Is the ideal entry when the eight and the 17 EMA are close together? So as they diverge, even though the stock may be closer to the eight and not to the entry? Uh, great question. Um, first thing that I'm going to look at is I, I want to enter stocks. Let me see here if I can move you out of the way just a little bit. There we go. Um, you see where that green line is and the black line right there. That's what I'm looking for in entry. Um, what I'm not looking for in entry is uh, exactly, see, I need to move you. I'm going to move you over to another screen. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Riley. I didn't even, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> you, you didn't feel that? I just moved you from one screen to another. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so what, what I'm not doing is I'm not looking for a $20.65 entry. I'm not looking for a, $20.91 entry. I enter in areas because I'm looking at charts that look good to me. Mm -hmm. If you feel good about the chart, uh, just don't chase an entry. No one ever made money chasing an entry. You make money when the chart goes in your direction. That's when you make money. So as I look at this, in fact, in the room, there was a couple of people bought this way before I did. And finally, I couldn't stand it. So I bought it this morning and they're up way more than I am right now. Uh, I'm up, but not what they are because they bought it a little cheaper. As long as I get it in this area right there, okay. as long as we have a rally and a pullback. And in this particular case, we've got some really good support right here, which we always want support, but this I think is pretty good support. Our green dots are rising. Our T line is rising. That's all I'm looking for. And you now, know, Rick, I will... and Rick, on that point real quickly, the question was the green dots and the red dots. That's the 17 EMA. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Sir. Yeah. And it's real easy to do on TC2000. I can't speak of other chart programs. I don't use those. But uh, if anyone wants to come in, like I say, every, everyone's going to get a link here uh, where you get a 30-day trial. Uh, come in. If the first thing you say is, help me set up the 17 dots, I'll be glad to do that. Okay. Uh, we'll certainly be glad to do that. And, uh, uh, but yeah, and you, you see how it trends. I only want to buy those trends. I want to buy those pullbacks. And there we go, right there. Um, Coop, these just move right here. So Coop, there we go. Coop, Coop is breaking out. And this is another thing. I, I don't have a problem buying on the breakout. 
Uh, again, it's not about some trick entry. It's about what can the chart do for you. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking at Coop at 275, how many people think that Coop can go to $300? Would, would anyone be happy with that trait right there? Man, I would be. I'd be tickled pink to go from here to $300. That would meet my goal four or five times over. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm looking for. As far as a stop goes, I, I would probably use today's low, to tell you the truth. I'm, stop. I'm sorry. Any other questions? I get carried away. Looking yeah, at you know, interesting. You're looking at the charts there. Rick, uh, we've had a couple of guys have asked, uh, what does Roku look like? Roku? Let's look at that. Roku. Um, right now, all right. One thing, I love the green dots. That's moving up. That's positive. But I think I want to come over here and I want to point out there's a fair amount of support right here. Okay. Right. Tag, tag, tag. A little bit of support. I'm sorry, resistance. Excuse me. So as far as buying Roku long, honestly, I would probably wait till it broke out to the upside. I, I think that would be uh, a better trade. We want proof. We want proof. So break out and then we want it to rest and then show us that it can hold. And then we want the buyers to start stepping in. And these candles here can also show that buyers are stepping in. And now we can move up. Okay. I, I don't know if you're looking at long or short. If you're looking at Roku a little on the short side, probably wouldn't do that actually till it got below 130, 113.40 maybe. Uh, okay. But right now, Roku, I think, is a little bit more on the bullish side, but I don't think I'd be a buyer till it moved up here. Um, and then from that level, targets are real simple. So that would be my trade. So if I bought it about here, I'm looking at 9% on the stock. That's going to be a 20, 22, 23, 24, 25% on the option. On the uh, option. Trade. Right. Yeah. And that was a question that came up on the right way options. Do you teach and cover only options or do you no. also mention stocks too? No, I, I, we have two trading rooms. Um, we have hit run candlesticks, which focuses on charts, uh, both options and, and uh, stocks. Okay. When it comes to options, that's, stri that's strictly um, uh, puts and calls directional. Uh, right way options is taught, is taught by my partner in another trading room, Doug Campbell, where they get more in the weeds on options and well, just more in the weeds. I mean, for the real, <laughs> for the real options guys, you know, for the, for the folks that want uh, really to get into options, that's, you know, that's where you might want to look. Yeah. <laughs> Another question came in here, Rick, do you ever use trailing stops on your trades? Um, I do after the, the, the first, uh, here, let's take a look at, yeah, things have really slowed down here today. Um, let's take a look at OSTK. We haven't looked at that today. Um, you can see how OSTK is in here. So if I was to buy OSTK, which I wouldn't right now, if I was, then if it came up here and it met my goal, whoops, I'm going to sell half of it. And I don't know that that's my goal. That's just where I'm going to put okay. a line. So example, I would sell right? half. Yeah. And then what I would do on the second half is – for a little bit, I would use a trailing stop. But the truth is, I don't have that kind of patience. I'm not that kind of trader. I'm, I'm really not. Um, I'm a base hit trader. Uh, if I can uh, sell something for uh, you know, $1,000, I'm going to take it. If it goes to 2000 good for somebody else. That's <laughs> just not me. Yep. But, but by doing that, that, by doing that, this is what, we've been able to do with the road to wealth account. And um, anyway, that's pretty good. Uh, I, I, I don't think that's too shabby right in there. And by the uh, way, anyone, if you want to go to the website, you can go down here and here's my statements, by the way, you can, you can click on it and actually see uh, the statements and uh, everything about it. So. Wow, that's great! Complete transparency here, folks. And, Absolutely. And Rick, and Rick you Absolutely. mentioned you did mention since we are just coming up against it that you do have oh, uh, yeah. some kind of a special that you're offering for people. Yes, thank you very much. Um, let's see. Can you guys? Can you see that? Yes, absolutely. Now I need to figure out how to. Oh. We have the link for you. Thank so you. 
<laughs> Thank you. Would you would you post that link? Because we will. <laughs> yes, we'll make sure that it's posted. I don't know where where did I do that? Oh, and by the way. For the thank you very much for posting it. Um, the 30-day trial, uh, you get you would get uh, a full full ride membership for 30 days to Hit Run Candlesticks and Rightway Options. Um, you also would get a full ride to the members only uh, trading app that we have available. And for that, we we post every stock we buy or sell uh, in real time. Uh, and uh, and again to both trading rooms, so uh, it's pretty cool. So if you have a smartphone, get in there, download the app. You do not have to be in the room uh, to get the app alerts. Uh, they come to your app no matter where you are. So I was at the dentist yesterday. Uh, Doug posted a trade, and I got it right there on my phone. So <laughs> pretty cool. Pretty cool. Did yeah. your dentist take advantage of it too? <laughs> you know, I've got one doctor that we, that's what we do. He, he I, I have to go see him once a month and we just sit there and talk about the market. <laughs> yeah. And then that's you send him do. a bill. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's yeah. wrong with that? <laughs> What's that? And then he builds you. What's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, it's a smart guy. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Rick, thank you so much for your presentation today. I mean, seriously, you, it was great having you in the room and taking the time to share your very, very direct approach to how you like to trade the markets. I think everybody really appreciates your candor. And I know that I certainly learned a lot from your presentation. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Raleigh. Pat, Nikki, thank you very much. You guys all have a wonderful Thanks, afternoon. Rick. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, folks. So uh, once again, we're doing a great job staying right on time. And as we mentioned here, here is the special offer uh, for uh, that Rick was talking about. You can get a 30-day uh, free access to the hit and run and the right way options uh, trading rooms and the kind of support information that they have associated with that. You just go to westmarktrading.com forward slash hit and run, and it will take you right there. So uh, here it is, 12 o'clock, excuse me, 2 o'clock Eastern.